Whether you're looking for a Chevy car, truck, or SUV, go see my friend friends at Apple Chevy in Tinley Park. With over 500 new and used vehicles in stock, they have what you're looking for and at the lowest price possible. Go to AppleChevy.com. All right, Donald Trump is on the stage at the Verizon Center right now in Washington, D.C. Uh, he is uh, talking to APAC, mm-hmm. the American-Israeli Political Action Committee. And let's dip in here. He's talking about Iran. 250 miles were designed to intimidate not only Israel, which is only 600 miles away, but also intended to frighten Europe and someday maybe hit even the United States. And we're not going to let that happen. We're not letting it happen. And we're not letting it happen to Israel. Believe me. We should have a drinking game. Every time he says, believe me, he said it four times already (laughs) in this speech. Believe me. Why should we believe you? Has he said great yet? Because that's another one. Believe, people say believe me when they don't believe themselves. Do you want to hear does something tend to really shocking? As many of the great people in this room know, painted on those missiles in both Hebrew and Farsi were the words, Israel must be wiped off the face of the earth. You can forget that. See, John Kasich said that in his speech, and I believed him. Trump says but, it. I don't believe him. But he's getting the applause. Are they kind of standing up? Minds write that no. In Hebrew. no, not yet. And here's another. You talk about twisted. Here's another. And he's doing this off part. of a uh, teleprompter, which is the, unusual. Very unusual. The him. horrible deal that we've made. The deal is silent on test missiles. All right. But those tests. Well, uh, uh, we'll we're recording this, United and if uh, something of major Security news Council comes out of uh, Trump at APAC, we'll bring it right to you. But uh, meantime, on the Super Celebrity Hotline, here he is, Geraldo Rivera, who, by the way, Geraldo was on The Apprentice. Mm-hmm. And if I am not mistaken, Geraldo thinks that Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States. Is that right, Geraldo? Hey, bro, what's up, man? How are you? I tell you what, I think he's going to be the Republican nominee. I think that he is, in fact, the Republican nominee now, and everyone waiting for a white knight to ride up and rescue the GOP is hallucinating. <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. Now, since you were uh, kind of right up, you know, with him on that show and around him, and you've known him. I mean, you're a New Yorker. You've been around him for decades now. I mean, I the guy scares the pants off of me, but I'm looking at him from 800 miles away. <laughs> uh, but are you? What is? What is he as scary as I think he is? Well, you you're scary. <laughs> That's true. You, you know, I've known him since. Uh, let me say, I met him. It must have been 1974. Uh, certainly by 1975, we uh, were hanging out a much different part of our lives. So I've known him. This is my fifth decade of knowing him. And I don't think that he's nearly as uh, as nutty as he's being portrayed. I mean, some of his policies are obviously, from my point of view, hideous. Uh, but I really believe that the guy I know is not the guy that's going to deport 11 million people and break up uh, citizen uh, children from their parents who happen to be undocumented. I just don't think that's going to happen. I know that he, he's got plenty of Muslims around him and uh, African-Americans and plenty of Latinos. He's going to his building. Uh, you know, you, he has to see a white guy. Everybody who works for him is a minority of one sort or another. Uh, Amorosa and, uh, does uh, not know, count. I just think it's okay. Right. That? Amorosa does not count. All right, let me. All right, let's let's talk. Let me, let me, look, I wanna, <laughs> that was great. I want to ask you about your my, your my comment about minorities. You said that he will get twenty five percent of the minority vote coming up, right? And a lot of people are like, "How right. could that happen, Geraldo? How could that happen?" Well, let me go through. I think that twenty five percent, first of all, as you know, twenty five percent is low on the Latino side because Mitt Romney only got twenty seven. George W. Bush at forty four percent. And, and won the election in uh, 2004, won re-election. Uh, so I think he's going to get, why do I think he's going to get more black votes than, uh, than the Republican nominee usually gets? The reason is, I think that this populist message of his, uh, 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 fighting against unfair trade, uh, you know, the, the carrier air conditioner pulling out, going to Mexico and so forth, uh, that and fighting against undocumented immigrants, I think that appeals to African Americans, because I think that some percentage of them, obviously not a, nowhere near a, a plurality or majority, uh, think that uh, you know that's why their economic situation is so dire. So I think they'll get more black votes than usual. I think they'll get less brown votes than usual. 
Interesting. Hmm. All right. Now, speaking of of all of this, I don't know how me. I'm just gonna make this transition. You know, as a broadcaster, Rondo, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna stop, take a pause, and say, "Hey, you're on Dancing with the Stars. How is (laughs) it? Great segue. The premiere is coming up tonight. Well, let me say this, Ro. That yes, this this program tonight, this live show has. Special appeal. So I, I don't don't ask me follow up questions. I won't answer. All right. But I tell you, if you if you live in Chicago uh-huh. and you and you and, and Chicago Land is your hometown, uh-huh. you are going to love this bit that I'm doing tonight. That's all. all right. I'm are you shirtless? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> well, that appeals beyond Chicago. I, would say. <laughs> yeah, I know. I global. Know. That's global. I know. I've seen your Instagram account. Too. Yeah, I know how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, now, you know, it's, it's funny because the people I know who have done this over the years have always come back from it and said it was a great, great, great experience. Mm-hmm. You have had the most amazing range of experiences of probably any modern journalist, right? I mean, you've done everything from great domestic stories to international stuff, war zones, everything. How so far in these couple of weeks of practice and getting ready for the big show tonight, I mean, where does, where does this all rank for you? Oh, you know, you just reminded me of something, Rose. But last night I was at my first, son you know i have five children my oldest son is 37 uh, my wife is out here all five of my children are coming together we went to my ex-wife the mother of my first child and mm-hmm. she showed me a letter from barbara walters that she had saved for when we were married in 1977 barbara walters congratulating me on this series i had done on cocaine abuse that was sweeping the nation you know so now it's a different day different drug but uh you know it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because i have been at this for over 40 years i've had experiences all over the place, uh, all kinds of different things. This is way out of my comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> it was on my bucket list. I asked a couple of times before. I always said uh, no for one reason or another. Uh, now I just decided, hey, if not now, I mean, at least I could still walk. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah that's Whether true. I could dance, that's I, another issue. Geraldo, I loved you on The Celebrity Apprentice. I thought it was entertaining Thank to watch you. you, and it was it was a fun. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of that show, but you were great to watch on it. I, what's the whole? What is this whole like reality show experience like? I mean, what's your takeaway after doing that, and does that affect how you approach this one? Well, you know, Celebrity Apprentice was interesting because there I was with uh, with Trump every day for six weeks in a row, and you really get to see the measure of the man. And the, you know, I'd never seen him really as a grandfather before. Mm-hmm. Never, uh, uh, you know, never really had a, a lot of uh, you know time to see him interacting with the other executives in his company and in the uh, so i really was interesting just to get to know trump as well as, as i did but what was like, what was weird on about the uh the the celebrity apprentice was that everybody wants to stab you in the back right you know it's a real individual competition and watching you so I, even my own teammates were plotting against me uh Kevin Jonas and uh, Ian Ziering and even Lorenzo uh, Lama plotting against <laughs> They did not like you, Geraldo. The- <laughs> they <laughs> were mean the and cruel. So <laughs> yeah, Dancing with the Stars, everybody wants everybody to succeed. They cheer each other on. It's a much more camaraderie, you know, collegial mm-hmm. kind of yeah, 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 for yeah. sure, yeah. You think Ian Ziering's going to make the cabinet for Trump? You think he's going to make it? <laughs> Charlie I don't know. Sheen? Is he, has he come out for him? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, Health and Human Services for Ian Ziering. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, all right, so, What's so, Amorosa's job? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, but, she uh, has a job, or she's know, a spokesperson already. She's already out there. I, she uh, yeah. probably ends up Secretary of State, maybe? All right, let me. Let, all right. As long as he doesn't hire Kenya Moore, that's the one, maybe. Uh, let me Joe Jonas, <laughs> right, well, any, any Jonas for that matter. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the physical nature of this, though. I mean, how many weeks you've been working out for it? You've been practicing. Well, this is the third week, and uh, you know, I, last time I danced, I was tequila drunk at my wedding in two thousand and three. Uh, you know, so it's not something that comes natural to me. I have a a dead foot from uh, back surgery five years ago. I can't feel one foot, so it's like dancing with a peg leg. But I got it all. You really up, can't feel your foot. I can't feel my right foot, no. Wow. But uh, it's all right. I, I, I watch it from time to time to see what it's doing. But, uh, you know, they got people that have done I told my mother that, that I was doing the show, finally, my 96-year-old mother in Sarasota, Florida. 
So mm-hmm. she tells me, uh, there's people that do that too. They got no legs. You got uh, you got one good one and one uh, numb one. Go out there and stop making excuses. I, I love okay, that. Mom. That's a mom <laughs> for you, that. isn't right. it? I right. love stop it. Stop whining. <laughs> Why are you Get whining, Geraldo? <laughs> hey, uh, let me ask you about exactly Cuba what it was. before I before we let you go here. And I know you got to get ready for the big sure. premiere tonight. It's going to start at seven o'clock here in Chicago. It's Dancing with the Stars on ABC Seven, and Geraldo Rivera is one of the stars. And uh, let's talk about Cuba for a second here. Uh, the president. First one since Calvin Coolidge. He arrived in Cuba last night. Raul Castro did not meet the plane. Donald Trump's made a big deal about that today, and I and I kind of agree with Donald Trump about that. That is a fairly disrespectful thing, uh, and I because I'm pretty sure that if Raul Castro landed uh, in Washington D.C. to normalize relations, the president would meet. Uh, and what what do you make of this? Do you think this is a this is a good deal for the U.S.? Oh, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked me. I, I've been there twice. Uh, you know, I sailed my boat there uh, both times and toured Cuba, always with a minder, you know, someone just shadowing yeah. you. It was so sad. I mean, it's colorful, the old cars and so forth, and the, the whole aspect of, uh, you know, you go back, it's like a time machine. Uh, but it's a sad place, and, uh, you know, it's a repressive place. But listen, uh, you know, we're friends with Vietnam, we're friends with China, we're friends with uh, all these African dictators. Cuba's 90 miles away. And the way that you open up these countries is with uh, with cell phones and satellite TV and uh, American tourists coming around. I, I think that uh, it's long overdue, and I, I, a small clique of uh, powerful uh, politicians from South Florida have kept U.S. policy skewered. Now, Raul Castro not meeting the president at the uh, at the airport, I think that that's kind of lame. I, I regret that. Uh, but I was delighted, I tell you the truth, that uh, that the president went there, and I think that you know, you think about uh, Cuba. Cuba's huge. It's uh, it's like the size of Chile. It's like a thousand miles long. Puerto Rico is only a hundred miles long. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the same. You know, it's they're our neighbors. There are three, four million Cuban Americans uh, uh, now. Uh, you know, I I just let it's it's time the Cold War is is over. Whether a nuance here or there, Trump can attack him for this or that. I'm I'm glad that he did. I'm glad he had the courage to do it. Well, you know, you just referenced that South Florida Cuban uh, expatriate community, which has been, you know, virulently anti-communist, virulently anti-Castro, uh, and against any kind of appeasement. Do you think, and, and that was, you know, now you're three, and many of them, uh, you know, the grandparents now of those, of the kids in that community, uh, were, you know, lost their businesses, their lives, their homes, all of that to, to, to Castro after Batista fell, right? So they, now, do you think because we're dealing with a second and third generation that's away from the reality of, you know, those losses and that trauma that it's finally now opened up? Is that the only route that this has taken? I think that's another wise observation, my friend. I think there that uh, when you see the generation nowadays, they're eating McDonald's, they're watching uh, MTV and Bravo and this and that, they're totally... Uh, Americanized now. They, they look at their parents, more likely their grandparents, and say, you know, what the hell are you still so pissed off about? Yeah. I think the way to get paid for if they have a house and they took over your house is to open up relations. And then you have, you know, what South Africa did, a kind of uh, reconciliation board that says, okay, you get this much, you get that much. Uh, you know, this is what it was worth in 1959. I mean, 1959 for the mistake. I mean, going back yeah. to the Eisenhower era, it's right. time. It's time to close this chapter. I mean, they, look at Eastern Europe. I mean, they were all our enemies in then those days. Now they're our best friends. I'll never forget the. Uh, I'll never forget the night, uh, Geraldo, that Michael Corleone was able to get out on the seaplane. I'll never forget <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, Great scene. Yeah, that's. that's, it. It. Yeah, that's, that's it. It. But I mean, that's the thing about that really always made me angry about. Uh, about Cruz and Rubio, two Cuban Americans, historic that you have these two Latino guys running, but their families fled Cuba during Batista, not during Castro. They didn't flee communism. They were just like uh, all the Mexicans coming across the border looking for a job, looking right. for a better life. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what their parents did. And right. to make it a communist versus free world was just wrong. All right. Well, Geraldo, good luck in this. I have you yeah. go. How, I have you how go. do we vote? We have to. Thanks, Anna. How, how do we vote for you? You have the, oh, yeah, but what's the number? You have the Let's number? You got, it's a, there's an 800 number. Let uh, Let's vote now. <laughs> Let's vote now. Can we vote now? Because in Chicago, we do special vote, you things with voting. <laughs> okay. You can't vote until 7 uh, Central. All right. Eight, 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 800 what? what is it? Uh, hold on. <laughs> oh, I got it. 
And you're with that uh, Edita Slowinska, right? She's beautiful. Edita Slowinska. Again, I I thought of Edita when I was talking about the Eastern Europe. She's from Poland. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wonderful, wonderful. She did the first bunch of seasons. She took time off to have a baby. Uh, I had her husband, uh, Alex, and their baby, Michael, two-year-old, to meet Erica and the family. It's really great. It's 800-868. 3403. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like we're trying to sell. It's like we're selling internet timeshares or something like that right now with, with her. All the, hey, home uh, shopping network. I, I just, I, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here, but I, I, but I, I have you going deep. Do not disappoint me. You know how I get. I'm do my best, you dude. Will. When I do my spin in the cha cha, I'm going to be thinking about you. Think about me. Oh. Thank you. Appreciate it, Rollo. <laughs> Thanks, Rollo. Thank you, my friend. All okay. Right. Bye. All bye. Right, bye. Bye. I, I know he'll go. I no, I, I think he's going to, you know, he'll stick around for a while. He's very entertaining. All right. Coming up on the program, uh, we'll have some of the tape from uh, Donald Trump at APAC. He's reading off a teleprompter, so it's going well for him it's, so far. He's crushing it, is what everybody's saying.